What is up everybody? How you doing out there? So in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make dashi. This is the way that I make it and I have had no complaints and when I make miso soup and I use this as my base everybody says it's the best miso soup that they've ever had. So follow along with me. So the first thing that you're going to need is kombu. Okay? This is seaweed. There's a lot of different seaweeds but this is the type you want. And when you get this Sometimes you're going to end up seeing that it's got a white powder. Some people will wipe it off. I personally do not because that white powder has actually natural glutamate in it. And then that can actually add to the flavor of whatever you're making. So for, for the amount of dashi that I'm going to be making here in a minute, let's use all of it. Why, why not? Okay. This may not look like a lot right now, but when this goes in water, it's going to enlarge considerably. And then we don't immediately want to cook this. What we want to do is we want to put it in water and we want it to sit in that water for at least a couple of hours, um, preferably overnight. So we're going to get a large pot. We're going to throw our combo in it. Now, this is the thing that a lot of people mess up on. And that is, your dashi is only as good as the water that you put in it. So do not use tap water. Repeat, do not use tap water. I use reverse osmosis, but you can use spring water or anything that has been purified. But do not use tap water. Tap water has got all sorts of stuff in it. And it's going to end up imparting a flavor in this. Dashi needs to be a very pure flavor. Okay and it's somewhat of a delicate flavor. So we want to make sure that we don't put any flavors in here that are going to ruin that. Use good water. And in this particular case with this amount of kombu, I can probably fill this up at least halfway, if not a little bit more. And you always make more dashi than you're going to need because you can use it for things outside of just soup. Now we are going to cover this and we are going to let this sit untouched for at least two hours, but preferably 12 hours or overnight, okay? Do not skip this step, guys and gals. Do not skip this. It's important, okay? There's a few things about making dashi that are very, very important, and if you try to speed through the process, you're going to regret it. Doing this will make the best dashi that you've ever had. And this is the dashi that I use for my miso soup, which everyone that's ever had it, including Japanese chefs, have said it's the best soup that they've ever had. So trust me on this, guys. We're gonna cover this, and we're gonna forget about it. And what was small has turned big. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this on the stove on medium heat. We do not want this to come to a boil. Uh, we want this to steam, basically. When you start seeing steam come off of it, maybe an occasional little bubble here and there, that's okay, but no boiling. And we want to do that for at least 15 minutes before we decide to go to the next step. We're going to be using bonito flakes in order to get our fish flavor in our dashi. So, the question is how much do you use? Well, it depends on how much water you're using and um, it depends on how strong of a flavor you want, okay? Um, when I'm making mine, I don't measure anything. What I do is I go by the way that it looks and the way that it smells, okay? Um, and then, yeah, there's, it's, never this, it's never a constant. The water I use is a different amount every time, so everything changes. Um, but I like to have a strong uh, fish flavor in there, but nothing that's overpowering. It should everything should be kind of balanced. So, in this particular case, I'm going to probably end up using almost maybe half of a bag this size, and I'll know because I'll just grab it by handfuls and I'll throw it in there, and I just kind of know how much I'm supposed to put in there. Um, if you like less fish flavor, don't put as much. Right? If you like more, put a little bit more. It's okay. You can taste it during the time that this is cooking to see if it's uh, to your liking. Okay, so we're gonna put that to the side. Cut the roots off. Just a bunch of green onion. Now if you wanna get more flavor out of these, you can go ahead and cut them thinly 
kind of like this, right? If you want more flavor out of them. Um, you can also cut them lengthwise, and then that is fine too. Um, we're just going to be extracting the flavor, and it's going to be in the water for a while. So, I usually will just do a rub dice like this. And these are all going to come out. So, uh, it doesn't really matter how they look, per se, because this is just going to be part of the, uh, the flavoring of the uh, broth of the dashi. So, from here, we're going to throw that into the pot with the um, kombu. As soon as this comes to temperature, we're just going to let it sit in there for about 10 or 15 minutes before we add the bonito flakes. It's getting close to being the proper temperature. During the time that we are uh, kind of stewing this stuff a little bit, you're going to see some bubbles come up. They'll call this scum. It's not really scum, but that's what they call it. Um, it's edible. It's fine if you want to leave it on there. But generally, you want to remove that for two reasons. Uh, the first is because it's not very appetizing looking. And the second is sometimes that contains proteins that are a little bitter. So we're going to remove that. You might not be able to see it, but there's very, very small bubbles that are kind of coming up. So you can see that there's some heat going on, okay? We can feel heat. We can see a little bit of steam. This is about the temperature that we want this at. Um, it's okay if it goes a little bit higher, um, but we want this for about 10 minutes. Think of it like you're trying to make tea, okay? You don't want it to be too hot because if it's too hot, it'll bring bitterness out of the tea, and the same thing holds true about the kombu, right? So we don't want to bring bitterness out. We only want to bring the good flavors out, and temperature can change that. And this right here, how we can see the steam, not too many bubbles, that's perfect temperature. So this has been seeping. For about 15 minutes I can take that kombu out right now okay see because we don't want this stuff to turn slimy and the longer you keep it in here especially at the higher temperatures this will turn slimy and it'll give off flavors and we don't want that this has still got the proper texture and everything to it so this is good we can go ahead and remove this okay so I brought this up to temperature and we're going to put our bonito flakes in here. For most people, that'd probably be enough right there. I generally put a little bit more. Something like that. We're not doing this at a rolling boil. We just want to see movement in there. And then how do you know if you've added enough bonito flakes? Well, you have to taste it, right? That's going to tell you. See, what I'm constantly doing when I'm cooking, because I don't use measurements, I'm always tasting it to see if I have that balance that I'm looking for, right? Um, because even with the recipe, you're not guaranteed that balance, right? So you, you have to taste things. This has only been in for a couple of minutes, and as time goes by, it will change flavor a little bit. But I always smell it, and I taste it. But you also have to let it sit in there long enough to extract the flavor, right? You can't just be judging immediately but I'm gonna put that much more in there. I like strong flavor. Now what I'm about to say is gonna sound kind of strange, but when you smell it, it should have a slight leather smell, kind of. And then also, the salt that you're going to be getting is gonna be from the bonito flakes, as well as the miso that you have later on. But we don't always put miso inside dashi like this. So when the salt level taste correct you know that you have the correct proportion of bonito flakes if that makes sense that's how you can kind of tell if you put enough you'll get a little bit of fish flavor um, but you're also going to get salt out of it and then so that's how i judge how much um, if i need to add more or if i put too much in you can always add more but you can't take it out right you'll have to add water if that happens but but the same thing, you want to go ahead and let this do its its thing for about 10 minutes. Okay, and you don't want it to be overly hot, and you don't want it to be under hot. You want it to be almost, almost coming to a boil, almost like a simmer. Okay, so I've tasted it. I know that that's about what I'm looking for. So from here, I have a uh, strainer with a paper towel. 
Paper towel's not really necessary, depending on the uh, fineness of your strainer. Now, I do not squeeze any of the stuff that's in here into my dashi, okay? Um, sometimes that can make it richer. Sometimes it can end up imparting a bad, bitter flavor. So I, I choose not to do it. Now you, on the other hand, hey, you do whatever you want. It's your, it's your dashi, it's your taste buds. But there you go, guys. That's dashi. And then this is what we're going to be using for our mushroom rice. We're going to be using this for our miso soup. We're going to be using this for some of our um, tamagoyaki. Um, there's other things you can use for it too that I'm not going to tell you about. But this is going to be your go-to. So anytime I say dashi, you're going to use dashi. This is what I'm talking about right here. So until next time, guys, I'll talk to you later.